This is going to be a really fun one today, and I know it's going to probably frustrate a bunch of people, but oh well. <laughs> so the question is, do you really need expensive mic cables for your home studio? So do you need to go and spend like, I don't know, $50 a cable for some gold-plated interconnects, or can you get away with some cheapo $3 cables? Now there's a lot of people that talk about this online, and a lot of it is just personal opinion. No one's really showing data. So in this video, we're gonna dive into the science of it. I'm gonna show you what the different cable responses look like, so then you know the answer to this question. A user in the Audio Science Review Forum named Vintage Flanker measured a bunch of cheap cables and compared them to some pretty solid industry standard cables that a lot of people in studios use. And so I'm excited to share his findings and the data he collected with all of you. We'll also talk about some other considerations for cables and when you might run into some problems regardless of how much money you spend on your cables. This is a good one, so be sure to stick around to the end of the video. And don't worry, I'm not gonna get super technical. I'm gonna break everything down so it's easy to understand, so then you'll know by the end of this video if you're wasting money buying expensive cables or not. And we'll also talk about some considerations you need to be aware of depending on your particular circumstances. Hey, what is going on? My name is Bobby Balo, and I'm the mixing and mastering engineer at Raytown Productions. And this channel is dedicated to helping you make better sounding music without spending tons of money on expensive gear and unnecessary plugins. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because I drop new videos every single week, and I know you're going to get a lot of value out of those. And since we're talking about the best mic cables, I think you might also be interested in a free guide I have available in the description. It's my home studio gear guide. This is all based on scientific measurements. Now this guide has a bunch of recommendations for microphones, monitors, speakers, cables, subwoofers. So pretty much anything you'd ever need in a home studio is in this guide. So no marketing BS here, just the facts. And if you are interested in that, definitely check out the description and download your free copy. All right, so let's talk about cables. I actually put together a presentation, which is kind of funny because that's what I do for my day job as a scientist. I like present data and now I finally get to do it on YouTube. So here are the four microphone cables that were used in this test. And I'll put a link to the original post in the description so you can go and look into all the comments that other people had. But the work that was done for this is really solid. So I think it's trustworthy. I couldn't find any issues with it. All these microphone cables were three feet or smaller, so they weren't super long, and we'll talk about that later on. In the top left, we have the Cordial microphone cable. It's about $20. In the top right, we have the AliExpress Canare cable, and this is basically a Star Quad cable. Um, you can get them for $18. We'll talk about this one a little bit more because this is actually a fake and it's kind of hilarious. Bottom left is Monoprice Premier Series. This is a $12 XLR cable. This is actually one that I have in my recommended studio gear guide, so it's kind of cool. You'll be able to see the actual data for this microphone cable. And finally, we have a real Canare Nutric microphone cable. And this one's a little bit more expensive because this is also star quad. It's supposed to reject electromagnetic interference the most, so in theory, it should give you a really, really quiet signal. But as you'll see, it probably doesn't matter too much. So let's talk about this AliExpress Canare cable because it looks really fancy, right? But then you take this connector off and the pins were not soldered correctly. So the shielding was actually soldered to pin three instead of pin one. So that means that this shield isn't being used correctly. So you'll see in the following data that this actually made a big impact to the quality of this cable. If you're curious how these measurements were performed, here is what was done. And these were performed by that user, Vintage Flanker, at the Audio Science Reviews Forum. So if you look at the frequency response for all four of these cables, even that fake Canare cable, the frequency response is pretty much identical from 20 hertz all the way to 20 kilohertz. If you think you're going to hear a difference in the frequency response from buying a really expensive cable, that's nonsense. If we look at the noise, this is where things get a little bit interesting. All of the cables, except for this fake cable that was wired incorrectly, had pretty much the same noise floor, okay? But that cable that had the shielding switched 
had lots of noise. And you can see that here. It's indicated by these red spikes. And it even had some 50 hertz hum. Okay, so that tells us that the shielding is failing because the signal is being influenced by the power supply. Okay, in a well shielded or properly shielded cable, you're not going to have any of this interference caused from power supplies. Okay, and that's why these all look very similar. So the $40 cable and my $12 recommendation all had the same noise floors. If we look at total harmonic distortion and noise combined, again, it looks pretty consistent across the board. The one that has the biggest problems, again, comes from that cable that was miswired. It doesn't have anything to do with the quote unquote quality of the microphone cable. It's just that it wasn't made properly. And if you take a look at this y-axis, this is the decibels of the noise and the total harmonic distortion. We're at minus 160 dB. That is extremely quiet. This is going to be quieter than almost anything that you connect to the microphone cable, okay? So the cable will not be making much noise at all. And if you're wondering what this giant spike at 1K is, that is a test tone to generate the total harmonic distortion. So th this is not an artifact of the cable quality. That is how you test a microphone cable for this measurement. Again, we look at dynamic range. All of the cables are almost identical, except for the one that was wired incorrectly. Testing for intermodulation distortion also showed almost no difference for any of the cables. And if we look at crosstalk now, you can see that obviously the one that was wired incorrectly shows large deviations. However, all of the other microphone cables were pretty much identical. So you're really not gaining anything by going to these more expensive cables. Now, there is something we need to talk about, and that is noise immunity. Like we showed, when you had a cable that was miswired, it was susceptible to noise, electromagnetic interference from chargers or power supplies or anything that you have in a studio. That is the purpose of having the shield wrapped around your conductors. It helps to prevent the noise from being transmitted into our conductors, which is taking the sound from a microphone to our interface, right? Or the sound from our interface to our speakers. So as long as you have the shielding right, it should, in theory, take out the majority of the electromagnetic noise. Okay, so an easy way to test this is to put the cable on top of a charger or something that is emitting a lot of electromagnetic radiation, and then you can test it using these same tools. So that is exactly what was tested in this next noise measurement. Just as you'd expect, you mess up that shielding, you're going to have almost 50 dB more noise in your signal from electromagnetic interferences, okay? So if you have a charger sitting in the studio and the cable's running over it, guess what? You're adding almost 50 dB of noise to that signal. So that is a problem. But all the other cables performed almost identically. Now, if you look closely, it's hard to see here in this plot, but the yellow series of lines is at the very bottom. That is the legitimate Canare cable. So that's the one that's star quad, and it has maybe 2 or 3 dB better noise rejection than the other cables. Are you going to hear that 2 or 3 dB when it's at minus almost 170 dB? No, you will never, ever hear that. So while that might be a selling point for that company, it really doesn't help us at all in our studio. And those types of cables cost a minimum of like $40. And there's a lot of cables that we need for our home studio, right? Now, I mentioned this earlier, but almost everything you connect the microphone cable to will have a noise floor higher than minus 170 dB. So we're not limited by the quality of our microphone cable. The only time this is a problem is that the microphone cable itself is defective or it's wired incorrectly. So you really don't have much to fear by buying a cheap cable online, as long as it is properly shielded and it's wired correctly. Now, an argument I hear all the time is that the high-quality cables have lower capacitance because they use oxygen-free copper, right? Now, the capacitance will act as a low-pass filter, effectively filtering out some of the highest frequencies. But what a lot of people don't talk about is how much cable you need to actually have that be an audible effect. 
using the worst cables available, you're going to easily be able to run over 100 feet of cable without hearing any degradation to the audio. And for most home studios, I can't imagine running more than about 6 or 10 feet. Now, if you are running live sound at a very big outdoor venue, this might become challenging and there's ways to get around that, but that's beyond the scope of this video. But what you need to know is that that is not going to be a problem. And so don't let all of that marketing about 99.99% oxygen free copper fool you. So let's talk about some reasons why you might want to consider buying a more expensive cable than the cheapest one you can possibly find. And there are basically three different reasons for that. The first reason is that the interconnects, so the actual metallic housing that you plug your microphone into or plug the other end into your interface, is usually higher quality. So it'll take more abuse, it'll last longer being plugged in and out or being left out in the rain, all those things. If you take care of your equipment, if you're delicate with everything, it probably won't be an issue at all. The second consideration is that typically with more expensive cables, some of them come with lifetime guarantees. So if you're looking for a cable for live use, like on a stage where people can trip over things like that, it might be a good idea to buy a cable with a lifetime warranty because if it does break, you can just send it into the company and get a new one for free. But typically in a studio environment, that's usually not the case. I've never had cables go bad all of a sudden. And the third reason is if you're paying for a more expensive mic cable, there's a pretty good chance the company has more of a reputation and they're gonna care more about their quality control. Meaning, it's probably wired correctly. But you can just check it yourself. And in fact, I'll just show you. Let's take a look at the Smogami cable because it's super easy to check this stuff. So all I'm gonna do is just unscrew this connector. And then you just pull this little barrel back and then we have this strain relief plastic here. And you just move that out of the way. And now you can see how this is wired, okay? And if you look around the end here, there's numbers. The biggest thing you need to be aware of is that the shielding, which is going to be that metallic braid, needs to go to pin one. So if you look on the end and you match it up, it's going to pin one. So this is properly shielded. If those other two conductors are switched, all it does is inverts the polarity. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's not gonna degrade your signal quality. It's just something to be aware of. So for quick reference, positive should go to pin two and negative should go to pin three or white to pin two, black to pin three, if you're using this type of cable. Let me know what you think about this video, and if you have really expensive cables, let me know why you bought them in the description below. Can you hear a difference? Is it because they're more robust? I'm super curious. Let's start a discussion in the comments. If you want my personal recommendation for the best value studio gear possible, definitely check out the description and you can download my free studio gear guide. That guide is awesome. If you think others will find this video helpful, please share it with them. And don't be afraid to share it to a social community like Facebook or Reddit. I want to thank you so much for your time and attention today. I hope I save you a few bucks buying your next set of cables. And I'll see you in another video.